Well, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We are so happy that you've chosen to be with us tonight and to let us come inside your homes to teach you the Word of God. We hope and trust that your day has been a good day. If not, then the Word of the Lord is where you need to come and drink from, and from a well that never runs dry, meaning God's, God's Word. Let's pray together. Father, how we thank you and praise you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity, oh God, to live long enough to know that you're sovereign. That you are very aware. You're very aware of all human behavior. And God, you will make sure that they get their rewards. Father, we thank you for being being true to you, to you, to your promises, and, and never letting us down. As we speak tonight, God, we pray that you let your word go out with life-changing power. In Jesus' name, we pray and ask it all. Amen. And thank God. Our lesson tonight is taken from James chapter one, verses twelve through eighteen. We won't talk to tonight about how to win over temptation. Looking at a theme, developing a faith that works, developing, developing a faith that works as we prepare to come back to church. We need our faith to be intact, to be strong. Winning over temptation. I, I want us to look at what God has to say about about man's oldest problem. And that's, you know what that is, that's, that's temptation. It goes all the way back to Adam, you read in Genesis, and we all eventually will face it. Sometimes even when you know what's right, you know what you should do, and know you should say no, it's, it's still difficult. Bible talks about two kinds of testing. One is called trials, and the other is called temptation. It's the same Greek word. Sometimes it's translated trials, sometimes temptations. It doesn't matter because sometimes the situation can be both a trial and a temptation. But to, to distinguish them, Trials are situations designed by God in order to help us grow, to strengthen our faith. Temptations are designed by the devil in order to cause us to sin. Look at verse 12. Blessed is the, blessed is the man that endures temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord promised to them that love him. So there's a, there's a prize, a reward for enduring temptation. First he says, you're going to be blessed. You don't give in to it. Happy, happiness comes from having your life under control, under God's control. So there is uh, there's no bad happiness, more devastating to you than to keep falling to temptation when, when you know you should say no. He says when you endure it, he says you, it produces happiness in your life. It also says that there is a, he says a crown of life. James says when you understand temptation, you can overcome it and learn to say no then you begin to be ready to, to live. Crown stands for abundant, abundant life. And so the question is how, how do I handle temptation? How do I say no when I want to say yes? James being the practical apostle that he is gives us five principles. How can I win over temptation? Number one, be realistic. Face the facts, you will be tempted. Even Christians are tempted. It's just 
like trials, temptations are inevitable. Have you ever met a pious person who says, um, everybody's tempted but me? You listen, you're tempted, I'm tempted. Everybody is tempted. He says, when, verse 13a, when tempted, when tempted. He didn't say, yeah, you, you never get too old for that. Never overcome it by getting too spiritual. The more you grow toward the Lord, the more you're going to face temptation. You're going to be tempted. The more you grow toward the Lord, the more, the, the more you go closer to him. Resign your life to his will. Commit. You're going to be tempted. He says, no temptation has seized you except what is common to man. Circle common in your Bible to man. That means we all we are all in the same boat. We are means that we we all have to, some temptations, some some problems. Be surprised, uh, shocked. Don't try to hide it. So some of you are caught in a compromising situation right now, but but it's it's but it's it's liberating when you don't hide it. So, well, you know others, it's liberating when you know others are going through the same things you're, you're going through. Hebrews 4, 4 and 15, Jesus, was, the Bible says Jesus was tempted in all, in all points like we are, yet he sinned not. Not a sin to be tempted, but it's a sin to give in to temptation. How can I win over temptation? Number one, be realistic. Number two, be responsible. Verse 13b. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me, for God cannot be tempted by evil. Nor does he tempt anyone. God does not tempt. We are in a society of irresponsibility. People blame everybody. They blame society. You just listen to them. They blame uh, the government. They blame the environment. They blame the heredity. They blame parents. They blame the spouse. They blame the devil. They even blame God. Some people say it must be God's will. Or he wouldn't let it happen. That's, that's blaming God. Don't make, you, don't make your bad choices then go on blaming God. You know, you let it happen. I'm not telling you. I'm not telling you everything. You know, you. God's not telling you anything that the Bible is not saying. God never says anything that contradicts the Bible. I'm not tell you one thing, and the Bible says something different. So be realistic. Be responsible. Be ready. Verses 14 and 16 of James chapter 1. James chapter 1 is our primary text today. 12 through 18. Be ready when temptation comes. Be ready. Be prepared for it. Peter says, be on your guard. Jesus says, watch as well as pray so that you enter not in temptation. Paul says, Put on the whole arm of God. Be ready. Each one is tempted by his own evil desires. He is dragged away and enticed. Don't be deceived. My dear brothers, be ready for temptation. It doesn't warn you in advance. One of the reasons this temptation is you don't know it's there. It catches you by surprise. You're the most vulnerable after a tremendous success. The Bible says, we think we've made it. Let him think it. He stand. Take heed lest he fall. You think you made it. That's when you're set up for a fall. 2 Corinthians 2 and 11. In order that Satan might not outwit us, we are not unaware of his what, what schemes. How do you prepare for temptation? By understanding how it operates. God wants you to know how the devil operates and how he tempts. 
The only thing the devil is consistent at it, he's been using the same old bag of tri tricks for over 2,000 years. Temptation, according to James, it is a process. Look at it, not, not a one-time act. James outlines four steps that the devil uses in order to tempt us. It is a process. You need to know this. You need to know his schemes. You need to know his schemes. First of all, desire. It starts with a desire. First step, temptation is desire. Desire. It's an inside job. Most desires are okay. You couldn't live without desires. A desire to eat, a desire to drink, a desire to sleep, a desire for sexual activity, a desire to accomplish something. He says, each one is tempted when he, when, by his own evil desires. But then desire out of control becomes a, a destruction in your life. Any desire that's out of control in your life is destructive. It comes with, starts with desire. Satan loves to take routine desires and turn them into runaway desires. So, so much so that you are consumed, obsessed by it. So consumed, obsessed with food, obsessed with work, obsessed with having fun, obsessed with, obsessed, obsessed with, 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 with sex and money. So it starts with a desire, the process of temptation, and then it, from desire it goes to deception. James uses a couple of terms from the, from the sports world. He is dragged away, he says, and enticed. The word dragged away is a hunter's term, it means snare. It means to be snared away in a trap. Enticed is a fishing men's term, which means to lure by bait. The secret of great fishing is the bait. David knows said the devil knows David knows this better than anybody. That's how that's how he got hooked up with Bathsheba. The devil knows this. You know, he knows your hot buttons, your weaknesses. He try to get you to fall from temptation. Starts with desire, move to deception, then disobedience. You know, what begins in your mind results in in action. What begins in your mind results, results in an action. It starts in your imagination. The battle starts with your thoughts. It must, you know, it must, it must start with desire, deception, and then disobedience. It starts with your thought. And after the desire is conceived, it gives birth to, the Bible says, sin. Thoughts, battles, your actions. It moves from thoughts, and battle starts with your thoughts and into action. First the devil gets you, gets your attention, then he gets you uh, to have an attitude, then he gets you to commit the act. People say, what's the danger? What's the harm? A little fantasy. What, what start in your mind eventually comes out in your act and comes out in action. So desire, deception, disobedience, then death. That's the tragic consequences as as they're given by James. That's what that's what losing the battle causes. Devastating results. Losing the battle. Losing the battle with temptation. And sin, <clears throat> when full grown, gives birth to death. So how do I, how do I, how do I overcome temptation? How can I win over temptation? Be realistic. Be responsible. Be ready. Then be focused. Verse seventeen. If temptation begins with our inner thoughts, then. We have to change the way we think. That's the key to overcoming it. Simply refocus your thoughts. 
Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights. The key to overcoming temptations is not to first you know, deal just with your desires, but you've got to start with desires, then move to, to deception and disobedience, and then And then you, you've got to make sure that you be refocused. Be refocused. Make sure you focus on the right things. That's the key to overcoming it. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights. The key to overcoming temptation is not to fight temptation, but simply to refocus your thoughts instead of looking at what you're tempted by, look somewhere else. Philippians 4 and 8. Get God's word in your mind. Refocus. But, but fighting your feelings, well, what? it doesn't work because whatever you resist will persist. If you're ignorant and weak, in it. And then refocus, be refocused, then be reborn. The single most important principle in breaking bad habits and getting, th getting control of your life is letting God control your life. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. What a great promise. God never puts more on you than you. Than you can bear up under. He, God will give you the strength. You can't do it by yourself. He'll give you the strength. Somebody says, well, I couldn't help myself. Well, want to bet? God says that's not true. Hey, listen, you can't keep birds from flying over your head. Martin Luther said this. But you can keep them from making a nest in your hair. You can't live in a temptation-free world. You take the resources God has given you in f to fight temptation. How you do a fellowship with other Christians? You know, you're not meant to fight battles by yourself. Get in a small group at Shady Grove by many. Come to Bible study. Then get into the Word. The Bible is your secret weapon against temptation. You just say, you don't know the truth. The truth will set you free. S set you free from bad habits. Well, what about you tonight? The temptation is getting the best of you. Maybe you're sad tonight, not living a happy life because you keep giving in. The Bible says when you get in temptation, you'll be blessed. If you don't have the strength tonight, then you need to ask God for it. First of all, start by being saved. If you're not saved and you're watching this teaching, then you need to ask God to come into your heart. Pray this prayer, Lord, I'm a sinner. I confess my sins. I live my life breaking your law. I had no regard for your church. You've had no place in my life, but God, I want you to come in and send your, let Jesus come in and be my savior. Give me a new heart, a new mind. Thank you, God. And now that you've given me the abundant life to live. Thank you, God, that right now. You said, if I confess in my mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in my heart God is raised from the dead, I shall be saved. And Lord, I've done that. Now I thank you that I'm in your kingdom. I thank you that I'm one of the children. I thank you that I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. I thank you that I'm a new disciple of his. And I have your way in my life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. If you're looking for a church home and this is where you fit, this is where you believe God is leading you to come, then you can call the number on the screen. 
the one that answers the phone, they'll get back with you soon. But we want you to be in a, in a place where you can grow, where your potential can be pulled out, where you can grow as a person, grow most of all as a child of God and fulfill your purpose on this earth. Well, we love you. We miss you. We look forward to the time we'll meet back in this place again. But until that time, we'll keep meeting just like this. Remember, you can rise and shine for the glory of the Lord is upon you. May God bless you. We look forward to the time we will see and meet at this same place again. Have a great night. Thank you.